Tonight, the motorway cops are facing a total shutdown. We have a lot of people who think, why the hell are they closed it? You're inconveniencing me, but if they come up here and they look at what we're looking at, then they understand why. As a lorry fire brings the M6 grinding to a halt. Yeah, he's going yeah, for it. Vehicle, uh, he's failing to stop. In the city, an 80 mile an hour chase through the streets. Yeah, the vehicle's done a red light. To try and bring those who break the law to book. And dealing with those drivers who just won't listen to reason. Whoopie doo, I bet your mum is proud of you. Keep going, just give me the ticket. You commit get offenses, on with it. you're going to get stopped. Yeah, off, I yeah. know, terrible, isn't it? And who take risks with other people's lives. And all he's talking about when he gets out is his car. You know, no concern to anybody else. You've got to be responsible for your own actions. Your choice. You take the choice. You've got to pay the price. On the M6 near Stafford, PC Paul Finlayson and PC Tracy Cope are on their way to an accident on the busy southbound section. Yeah, we've had reports for three vehicle road traffic collisions, so we're just uh, making towards it at the moment. We know we've got one lorry and two cars. Until we get there, though, we're not going to exactly know what we've got. We've got uh, several miles of tail back and obviously one vehicle uh, facing the wrong way at this stage. There was quite a substantial debris field and it was clear that there'd been a significant impact between two vehicles. One lane has already been closed to traffic. Hey guys, is everyone okay? Anyone injured? No? Is it just yourselves involved? Yes, just the two vehicles. Incredibly, no one's been hurt. Once we'd identified who the two drivers were, the Ford Focus and the HGV, We've then got a bit of a routine that we go into to identify if there's any immediate causes for that accident. We'll just get the, uh, the scene cordoned off, make it safe. We'll come back to you and find out exactly what's going on. The car driver has had a very lucky escape. His car has taken the brunt of the crash, while the lorry has only minor damage. On initially speaking with the HGV driver, he indicated that the focus had pretty much come to a standstill in lane one. He's driving 44 tonnes, these things just don't stop on a penny. And uh, confronted with a, a slowing vehicle that nearly stopped, he had no choice but to hit it. The car driver, however, has a different story about what caused the accident. Do you know how it happened? I changed from one lane to another and, and so forth, yeah. and then it just hit me. OK. But the cops suspect the crash may have a much simpler explanation. Have you had a drink? I can smell drink on you. Given the fact that we were outside, uh, is unusual in itself. May yeah? Have had, yeah. OK. You're OK? You're not injured from the accident, though? Oh, no, no, no. What I want you to do then, right, is we're going to do a quick breath test with you. OK? When was your last alcoholic drink? I'm not sure, maybe about lunchtime or whatever. About, about lunchtime, so several hours ago. A couple of hours, yeah, two or three hours ago, yeah. Okay, and how much did you have to drink at lunchtime? One or two uh, uh, units. When someone starts talking to me about the units of alcohol they've consumed, it's not a natural conversation, it's not something you'd usually use. And it starts to give a little bit of a, a heads up that he might be trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Now, forget the units, what actual drinks did you have? Wine. Wine. How yeah. many glasses of wine? One or two. One or two? My I colleague will it. hold the machine. Good deep breath, blow until I say stop. Blow, not suck. No, blow, not suck. Let me, just blow. Point, let me just point something out. It's a very sensitive machine. It won't be fooled. When someone has been drinking and they think they're now in trouble, they'll try and fool us. They will try and suck, they'll try and blow to the side. They will do everything but blow into that little tube because they don't want us to catch them. It knows what you blow in comes out here. Deep breath. Breathe. Blow, 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 blow. Do you want this for me? Okay, sir, I'm arresting you for driving, okay, whilst over the prescribed limit of alcohol. Yeah, fine, sir. Yeah, we'll check for custody for us. Okay, I'm going to escort you to my vehicle now. On the handheld, what, 122? Legal limit's 35. I was very surprised at his high readings. He seemed quite composed. He didn't have the appearance of being drunk. You're going to be taken to a police station where we're going to put you on an evidential breath test machine and find out how much, how much, one sec, how much alcohol is in your system. Smelt it as soon as I got to him. And to be able to smell it from somebody a metre away, then somebody's had a fair drink. 
especially outside. Uh, the sergeant's obviously going to deal with the other driver and just make sure everything's OK with him. And it frees us up to go and deal with the other driver now and put him on the evidential breath test machine. So we'll get uh, that. That's the reading that will matter, not this one. So whatever that says is the one that we, we work with. We take it from there. People still don't get it that you cannot drink and drive a motor vehicle. People just don't understand how dangerous it is, and it's us that have to pick up the pieces. The cops and highway agency officers remove the mangled car from the motorway, allowing the eight-mile tailback of rush hour traffic to clear. The drunk driver is taken to Cannock Police Station, where he'll finally have to face up to his responsibilities. Across the Midlands, the rush hour is in full swing, but the temperature is dropping fast and road conditions are worsening. PC Martin Smith is on his way to another accident. It appears that a car may have rolled. Uh, not sure if there's any injuries involved yet, but the suggestion is that somebody is trapped in the vehicle. So we're uh, just trying to make a bit of quick progress to get there. We're only about four or five minutes away. Emergency crews have already arrived and are working hard to beat the failing light and freezing conditions. It was really, really bitter cold. It was not a good night to be out there on the road at all. Incredibly, the driver has been able to free himself from the wreckage. A good thing too, because this Toyota isn't an ordinary motor. You could just see by looking at the car, it was an out-and-out thoroughbred racing car. Not the sort of thing you'd want to take your family out for a day out in. Strictly something for use off-road. Because it's been modified for racing, the emergency services have been checking for unexpected hazards. Batteries are slated. Yeah. There's uh, no, no nitros in there, which we had reason to expect early on. Got nitro fuel so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Put a nozzle in there, which is nice. <laughs> now that the scene is safe, PC Smith's priority is the driver of the crashed car. What's the nature of the injuries of the guy in there? He's self extricated out of the car. He's got a little bit of some lower back pain. Yeah. But, um, they're, they're probably going to collar him and board him anyway for, for precaution. Yeah, he's collared already, I've seen that, yeah. Got himself out of the car, uh, comp was mental when we got here, query knocked out for 30 seconds towards a minute, um, so the guy that arrived about five or six minutes after. Brilliant, no problems, and uh, I'm not talking life threatening, are we? Not at all, for real. Uh, uh, we're only talking of minor injuries, he's got a bit of lower back pain at the minute, but it's precaution, he's been put on the ambulance, uh, boarded in and collared, just to protect against any further damage to spine or anything. It's been a remarkable escape, but it was an accident of the driver's own making, according to those who saw what happened. We came down the slip road, and uh, as we came across, the guy in that car just, just sort of flew down the outside of us, came into the middle, middle lane, real disregard for anybody else, to be honest, and the next thing you know, he, the car just seemed to fly away and just started to spin, went up in the air, hit the bank, and then just came back down. So if you look at the car, there's all sorts of strange equipment on there. Couldn't give a monkey's about anybody else. I mean, I've got the family and the children in the car and he's just flown down here. The stupidity of one person could have caused the death of another or others. And that's the way you've got to wait up. Uh, you're out there on the road in a car like that. Moderate what you do, moderate how you do it, because you've got to think of uh, the fact that you're responsible for your actions ultimately. You know, we're, we're behind him, but the thing flies up in the air. What are you supposed to do? And it's just spinning around and then goes up the bank and then bounces back down. And all he's bothered about when he gets about, gets out is his car. You know, no concern to anybody else. Fortunately, the only one who is paying the price for his recklessness is the driver himself. How you doing? Yeah, I'm policeman for the motorway, all right. As PC Smith talks to the driver, it becomes clear the man has no idea what happened or how close he came to causing a more major accident. He doesn't realise the car's rolled over, he only thinks it's going spinning on the hard shoulder. He doesn't realise he's actually gone over on his roof a couple of times, but I think he does really accept how lucky he is. As the driver is taken to hospital, PC Smith takes a closer look at the car. It's got racing seat belts, full roll cage, he's even got his fire extinguisher in the back, look. But he's stripped everything out that adds weight to it. Totally modified for speed, not necessarily for road use, although it was legal. Well, he yeah, got nothing wrong with his tyres, so fine. There's no sign that mechanical failure contributed to the crash. Yeah, plenty of tread on them. So it's likely speed was a factor, but ironically, it's the racing modifications that saved the driver's life. If you notice here, like, he's got the roll cage in, that's what saved him. If he had a roll cage in that car, if he hadn't modified it to track spec, he would have died in that crash.
without doubt, it was the roll cage that maintained the structure of the car. Although it was all dented around him and all smashed up, the roll cage was intact. I mean, it's a definite write-off, absolutely definite. But the souped-up Toyota is not all it's cracked up to be. And PC Smith is particularly unimpressed by the personal touch the driver's given his number plate. It modified it to such an extent that it bore absolutely no relation to the number that it was. There was uh, there's meant to be numbers in a number plate in the UK and there are actually no numbers contained in it. With the examination complete, PC Smith is in no doubt that racing cars like this one are best kept off the highways. It's modified for track use, keep it on the track. And if you're going to take them on the road, then you've got to be watchful of how they're driven. And there's no place on a public road for that manner of driving. At Cannock Police Station, the drunk driver who failed a roadside breath test after causing a crash with a 44-tonne lorry is waiting to be booked into custody by PC's Paul Finlayson and Tracy Cope. Will I be going back home? Not at the moment. Uh, not at the moment. Okay, that's fine. Is your daughter expecting you at any time? No, actually she told me not to come. Oh, did she? Uh, she said, uh, don't uh, do too much running around. Right, OK. That type of thing, but I just wanted to surprise her, basically. Okay. He'd just been involved in quite a serious collision and it wasn't really registering with him. He was making comments about running around for his daughter and that it was a surprise for, for him to go and see her. But I don't think he was quite contemplating the fact that he was now in a police custody. The cops need to interview him about the accident, but first he must take two more breath tests. The lowest result will be the one that counts in court. That's it. Deep breath, deep breath. Blow, 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 go, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, go, go, brilliantly, keep going, keep going, go, 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 stop, stop, stop. That was excellent, sir. No, 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 don't touch that. Big deep breath and blow. After a good start, the man is back to his old tricks. Keep going, keep going. Stop, 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 stop. That wasn't, that wasn't at all, sir. You didn't blow at all. The machine told me that. When it comes to people trying to mess us around, we can understand people will have a go, but ultimately they're digging themselves into a much bigger hole. We will find out how much alcohol is in your system. Blow, 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 keep going, keep going, go, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, go, 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 go. Keep on, stop, 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 stop. That's great. And just step away from the machine. OK, sir, your lowest proportion that you blew was 103. OK, the legal limit, sir, is 35. OK, you are above the legal limit to drive, OK? you are around three times the legal limit to drive a motor vehicle on a road. You will have to stay at the police station until the alcohol level has reduced somewhat in your body. OK, do you understand everything that's going on? Absolutely. Yeah, OK. Just into this one. It's going to be a good few hours. Yeah, you're very high over the limit, sir. You're nearly three times the legal limit to drive a car. So, uh, uh, when I leave from here... When you leave from here, you'll need to get somebody to pick you up. Obviously, we can't take you home. You live in the Cheshire area. I have to... You'll have to arrange for someone to pick you up, yes. Where are we now? This is in Cannock. This is just off Junction 12 of the M6. Despite PC Finlayson's explanation, the driver is still struggling to grasp the fact that he'll be spending most of the night in the cells. I can't even go by train or something from here. We, we, the problem is the trains probably won't be running at that time of night. That's what I mean now. No, sir, you can't go anywhere now. You have to stay here because you, you are classed as being too much alcohol is in your system for us to interview you. I be, um, driving. It doesn't matter, sir. We can't charge you when the alcohol level is so high in your system. I'm afraid you can't go anywhere for a, a good while yet. I don't know how I'm going to get back home. But the man's pickup arrangements are the last thing on PC Finlayson's mind. He could have very easily have caused a fatal collision on the M6 motorway that day. At the very least, he caused widespread hassle and problems for a lot of motorists. Yet, he just wanted to go home. As day breaks, drink drivers are less of a problem for the motorway cops, but they're still on the lookout for other motorists who disregard the law. Just outside Oldbury, in the West Midlands, PC Adam Toll is keeping an eye on the morning traffic. We'll have him. He's on the mobile phone. 
The use of handheld mobile phones while driving has been banned since 2003, but hundreds of thousands of drivers continue to flout the law. Pull into this lay-by for me, please, sir. Thank you. After you. It's amazing how many people you stop and the, the wide variety of excuses or the reasons behind why they're using the phone. The only real answer is that you shouldn't be using your phone full stop. Do you want to step out of your vehicle, sir? As soon as it's moving or the handbrake's off and you're in gear, you're in control of that vehicle and that is a big no-no. I think you know why I'm stopping you. Yeah, the, I the, do. the look of, oh, sh as you put the phone down, says yeah. it all, doesn't it, really? Well, no, it just rang and I just answered it and told him I was going to ring him back. Yeah. Um, I would, actually, I was in the process of trying to program it into the car. I've just picked the car up. Right. Oh, no, Is it a manual or automatic? It's an auto, mate. Auto, yeah. right. Um, OK. Come and grab and yourself I'm, a seat. I am a professional driver. So. Okie dokie. Thank you. I've pulled you over because you're on your mobile phone. Uh, it's yeah. Simple, simple as that. Yeah. I regard it as a serious offence. Right. I but, don't. But, well, I, I do because and it most people fate. don't. Okay. I'm, yeah, but you know, right. at the end of the day, I could have been smoking a cigarette, so that's in that hand. I can have earphones on; that's yeah. legal. Okay. But I'm not allowed to, you know, to. It's, yeah. it's, it's, well, a, that's, it's that's a money making scam. That, that's and the it law. Is. You know, they can give me the reasons uh, until the cows come home. But the bottom line is, he's using his phone and he's potentially driving a vehicle that could kill somebody or even himself. Look at it from my point of view. I work on You've the motorways, yeah. right? Yeah. I've been to, last year, for example, three mm. different fatalities. I don't want to hear no, this. No, well, I've seen more fatalities than you've ever right. seen, so I was a okay. fireman right. for years, so don't tell me. Okay, so I don't want to hear this. So you no. should know better then, shouldn't I do you? Know, I do know better. Well, you don't. If, you know, if you're a motorway policeman, get mm. on that way, or motorway and stop these mm. blooming people. Have you got any points on your licence, sir? Yes, I have. I've got six, and six. I'm going to get some more, am I? You are? You're going to get yeah. three points today from me. I thought me. so, yeah. Lovely. You're the typical person that's not going to listen to anything I'm going to say today, No, because are you? I've heard it all before. Right. I don't like all and this bullshit. If I see you again on your phone, or yeah. somebody else does, that's your licence gone, isn't it? <clears throat> what do you do for a living, please, uh, Patrick? Professional driver. It makes it even worse, doesn't it? As a professional driver, yep. you should know better. Yep. As a professional driver, he should also know that he has to keep his licence up to date. How long have you been living at that address for? Um, about two years. Right, why haven't you changed your, your driver's licence then? Oh, because I've had so much hassle with my driver's licence, it's another thing, another con thing. Two years is not acceptable. I didn't it's realise simple as that, I just forgot I hadn't changed okay. it. Which station would you like to take your licence to, Patrick? It's if they're there, Banbury. I mean, most of them are out in the cars playing about, aren't they? They're never in the so bloody station. Doing the job just like you used to do as a yeah. fireman, eh? Well, I wish you would do your jobs. Well, I am. There's so many. I mean, the, that's why the public are so anti you lot at the moment because you just don't do. You're, you're sitting in police cars, hiding on motorways, collecting mm. drivers. That's well, all you do is drivers. Well, you don't do anything else. Muggers, drug eaters are all going all over the place. But no, I'll get the driver because it's an easy one, not easy mm. neck. It's a sh it's a shame, really, isn't it? Because it if is, you weren't yeah. on the mobile phone. Maybe I could have been dealing with some problems yeah. today. Yeah, but you because could, you're on yeah. the phone, I've had to stop and deal with you, you first. You didn't have to. So Never mind. It's, it, look at it in that perspective, really. Whoopie girl, but you your mum is proud of you. you Keep you, going, just you, give me the ticket. You commit offences, you're going to get stopped, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, I know, terrible. Okay, yeah. and you should know really, I should be locked up for that. If I start arguing with him, it's only going to escalate into a row. And as a professional person, um, you've got to try and remain calm. Yeah, you've still got your six points. This will take you up to nine now. You've got Whoopie two options. Do. The driver's said his piece, but he doesn't seem to know when to stop. I need to explain it to you, so. Oh, God, yeah. Go on, All right. Makes you feel important, you carry on. That's it. Prick. Sorry? Prick. Did you want to say that again? Because no. you'll get, end up getting arrested, and I'll quite happily lock you up if you want, want no, to do I'll that. Go on, then. Get on with it. All right. Now PC Toll has a few words for him. I think your attitude stinks. I've yeah. been trying to be professional with you today. I don't expect to be called a prick in the car, all right? We've all got tolerance levels. As human beings, we can take so much before someone pushes us too far. And if you were a firefighter when you was, I wouldn't have come to any scene and called you a prick, all right? No, Would you sorry. expect somebody to call you a prick no, on, the, no, on the street? No, right, then fair enough. Right, fair so comment. knock it off and deal with it properly and try to be a bit more professional, all right?
I'll be honest with you. I was at the junction there. My phone rang. I answered it. I said, I'll phone you back at that. I'll see you. Put the phone down between my legs. Mm. Next thing, I'm pulled over. I was stopped. I was actually stationary. If you wasn't, Patrick, you were driving. All right, then. Because the lights were on green. Mm. If you were stationary, I probably would have given you slightly the benefit of the doubt, but I probably would have still stopped you. OK, have you got anything you want to say to me before you go? Or have you got anything? Get any questions? No, what's the point? All right, OK. <laughs> The motorway cops don't expect thanks for stopping people using the phone, but a little bit of common courtesy would be nice. Okay, safe journey. No point getting worked up with these people. Let them have the rant and rave. If, you, if you're not round back at them, then they've got nothing, no fuel to the fire, have they? So he's the one that's going away with points or a court appearance. People using mobile phones, you know, are not concentrating on the road. And, you know, the ultimate prize is either killing themselves or killing somebody else. 45 miles away on the M6, PCs Paul Finlayson and Vincent Smith are on patrol. A report is coming in about a red BMW wanted by another police force and which has been seen in the area. It's a performance vehicle and uh, we needed to, to get into the area to intercept it. The plan is to try to catch the BMW before it leaves the motorway network. As they race to intercept it, the radio controller updates them with some good news. Thank you, 1-1. Uh, the BMW's headquarters just gone into Kiel southbound. Um, we need to well, we've just, just, just had further intelligence to tell us that uh, this BMW has uh, now gone off into Kiel services. If it does move off in the meantime, um, we have got a camera watching it, and uh, hopefully they'll update us. With the car under surveillance, the cops can relax, just a little. They should be there in 15 minutes, so long as nothing gets in their way. Trailer lane freezer. Looks like it. It's illegal to tow a trailer in the outside lane, but that gives the cops a dilemma, whether to continue to keel services or to give the driver a ticking off. What do you want to do? Well, if we think this car's stolen... But he needs to know he can't be in lane three with a trailer, does he? The problem is sometimes the public can get in our way when we're trying to, to get to something else. And unfortunately, on this occasion, that is exactly what happened. What do you want to do? Stop him and tell him what? I'll tell him if we go past. PC Smith decides to compromise by signalling his disapproval from the police car. But the driver seems intent on ignoring the cops. Well, he won't look at us, Paul, so... Oh, well, have him then. He can have a ticket as well. Now the driver's in for more than just friendly advice. We thought we had enough time to deal with this driver, to make him aware of his faults and that the fact he shouldn't be in lane three, but then obviously get on to the Z4. And to be honest, we were trying to do both. But they've discovered a much more serious problem. He's got no brake lights, has he? I don't know, he hasn't on the trailer, anyway. I can't see any brake lights on his... Have you connected this up? Got no brake lights. Did you check that was working when you left? The light? Yeah, the one here, well, yeah. Yeah, 1-1. One, one. Has that BM uh, left the services yet? Yeah, we see. We're going to have to deal with this chap first. We'll try and get it done as quick as we can. This may take much longer than PCs Finlayson and Smith had planned. For now, the BMW will have to wait. Seven miles south of Birmingham, PC Toll is back on the motorway. He knows that drivers tend to watch their speed when they see the motorway cops on patrol, but sometimes this causes problems the cops don't want. The first thing that'll happen is when you look in your rear view mirror, there's a, a line of about 100 cars and no one's wanting to overtake. And that then starts causing tailback. Fortunately, there's no congestion on the M5 today, and PC Toll is making sure it stays that way. We're just travelling over the speed limit between 75 and 80. This car overtakes us and has a look across as a, um, a, a small child that's, that's waving at us. Still doing 80 miles an hour now. Unbelievable. I've been travelling at 80 miles an hour, specifically to let the traffic move. Uh, at a steady pace. This lady in the vehicle in front has still continued to overtake me at that speed. Bearing in mind the speed limit's 70 miles an hour. 
it shows a poor display and a, a real disregard for the police and the laws of the land. It's uh, beyond belief, especially with a child in the vehicle. Hey, mate, you're right. No, it's not. It's not going to make your day. What's the speed limit on the motorway, madam? Right. So why are you insisting on overtaking me when I'm doing 80 miles an hour? Okay. And continue to still travel at that speed when you've overtaken me as well. Second. I appreciate you want to get your little lad to see me, and I think it's lovely. But the speeds are there for a reason. And he's safe, these paramounts. I'm sure you'd agree with that. Maybe some people will think I'm a bit of a stickler, but it just doesn't show a good example for the, the hundreds of motorists that are behind that are sticking to the speed limits. I'm not going to deal with by means of a fixed penalty ticket today, but I'm going to give you a caution for it, OK? You've given me an explanation. Your driving wasn't dangerous to a point, but I want you to learn from it, really. Just stick to the speed limit. Have you got a driver's licence with you? Just be careful getting yourselves out, OK? All right, you stay with me. I'm just going to get him to come and sit in the car. I need to write a ticket out with the mob, and it's a good excuse for the lad to come and see the car, as that's the reason she's overtaken me, because she wanted the son to wave at the policeman. Do you want to come this way, matey? And just have a seat in the rear for us. I'll only keep you two minutes, and I'll get you on the road. PC Toll may be a stickler, but the woman is lucky to be led off with just a caution. You can just shut the door for me. We're just going to do a check on your driver's licence status. It's what I do with everybody we stop for it, OK? Mike Alfrosca Tango 33 for a person pin. See how she I'll check, please. A driving licence check is standard procedure because it can throw up all sorts of hidden problems. Have you, have you updated your licence at all? Have you changed your address? Oh, Why not? I'm never What's happened is that you've probably gone through some speed cameras or things like that in that period from where you've lived at Woodham close to where you are now. And because either you've been disqualified, yeah? That, I was 30. Right. It's my birthday. Right. That'll be the reason why, then. Have you applied... Did you apply for your licence back? Yeah. Right. Did you get that in the post from the DVLA? I'm not sure. Yeah, I would have. No, 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 no. You all remember you've got it in... Honestly, 14 years ago. Right, OK. Well, there's a, good, there's a good chance that you probably haven't applied for your licence back and got it back because they've expired your licence, which means that you're not allowed to drive. If it's in the 12-month period from the date that have expired it, because it may have only expired it last week, which gives you 12 months to apply for it back with the DVLA. If it's over 12 months, I have got no choice but to seize your vehicle from you and you're going to end up going to court or having points on your licence that you've got already. That's worst-case scenario. Let's hang on with that for the moment, OK? <laughs> That's worst-case scenario. I'd sooner give you the worst case than make it smell of roses and then hit you with a bomb. Do you know what I mean? So that's, that's what you could be expecting. Sparing me two ticks. Go ahead, over. PC Toll needs to get to the bottom of the expired licence and the woman faces an anxious wait. Over on the M6, PCs Finlayson and Smith are back on the trail of the suspected stolen BMW. It's been an hour since the control room first reported that the BMW had stopped, but the cops' timing has been perfect. Yeah, is the BM travelling or is it still at Kiel? Next thing is still at Kiel. The high-performance car is under the watchful eye of CCTV operators. It was a Z4, wasn't it? Z4, yeah, convertible red. Go ahead. Sure enough, as we're entering onto the services, the CCTV informs us that an occupant from the vehicle is actually returning to it, which is great. That's exactly what we want, hopefully, being able to get an offender and get the vehicle stopped before it, uh, it gets mobile again. As the driver returns to his car, he's met by PC Smith. Where are you travelling to? London. Can I just grab some more details about what's on this marker? How long have you had the vehicle for? Two hours. Two hours? I just picked it up from BCA. Yeah, he's bought it from Right, OK. The, the gist is, at the moment, we don't totally know what's going on. All we know is that Cheshire Police have an interest in this vehicle and they're concerned that it may not be um, as it says it is. We'll just see if we can establish we have got definitely the right vehicle 
then I'll speak to the Cheshire detectives, hopefully, and uh, we'll see if we can get this matter sorted as quick as we can for you. This particular chap wasn't aware of any police involvement with the vehicle, and as far as he was concerned, he spent a lot of money on a nice car and was taking it so he could resell it. It's like new, isn't it? It's like new. The cops need to check this is the car that they're looking for. Is there any stamped bulkhead ones, or is that a stamped? That's stamped, that is. Stamped, yeah. There's one in the window there, Paul, which matches as well. The chassis number matches the car Cheshire Police have reported as stolen. Just going to speak to Cheshire now and see what they want doing with it. Looks to me that somebody who's possibly had it in the past has done some criminal fraud or whatever. Okay. PC Finlayson is hoping to get more information from the neighbouring force. We've got a vehicle stopped um, on Keel Services at the moment. This guy's just bought this two hours ago from the auctions. How much did he pay for it? 15 grand. Or thereabouts. That's the one, yeah. All <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> You're not going to be chuffed. All no, right. You're joking. From Paul's reaction, it's not looking very good. So we might be taking it with us. And he might be getting the bus home. PC Finlayson has discovered the car is part of a huge illegal operation. Hello, sir. Right, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. OK, we are going to have to seize this vehicle. Yeah, I appreciate it might come as a bit of a shock. The reason being is this is part of a complicated fraud involving a large number of high-performance vehicles. According to Cheshire Police, the man's BMW is one of more than 80 cars implicated in the complex crime. When you're looking at 80-plus performance cars, you're looking at hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of vehicles. I mean, this could quite easily add up to millions of pounds worth of vehicles over a very short time. And what I suggest you do is you get in contact with the auction house um, because obviously they will have a procedure for this and you may be able to claim money back against them. I want to get them before they close. You can do. All I say is, whatever they say, we will have to be still taking the vehicle. That's not going to right. change I today. I want them to know. I mean, if, but if yes. I need to, can you talk to them to tell yes. some sort of verification yep, that that's... I'm getting stranded at them? Yeah, yeah, that's not a problem at all. Can I have recovery, please, to Keel Services so far? As they wait for the tow truck, opinions are divided about the £15,000 motor. Nice car. I don't like them. It suits me. Something sporty, sleek, very similar to my demeanour. It's horrible. There's no tow bar on it. That's because you like estate cars, whereas myself, but young, dynamic, longer. stylish, you, you like trucks and... I'm a man that drives a micro. You like trucks and estate cars and <laughs> things that carry stuff. Me? High performance. I've got a taste in cars. Stylish. What I was born for. Well, I think the gentleman's having a bad day. But um, I'm sure it'll all work out fine for him in the end. No, I've been a motor trader for sort of 15 years now. Um, and I've never, I've never had such an incident ever before. It's the first time I've ne ever known anything like it. Picked it up today, drove it about 60 miles down the M6 and stopped by the police and looks like it's going away and I'm not going to see it again any time soon. Appreciate your time. Away. Yeah, I apologise under the circumstances, but to be frank, it was going to happen at some point. You wouldn't have made it down to London. Yeah. Personally, I'm gutted for the chap. That could have been any one of us. You've gone along to a legitimate company, you've bought a vehicle, the relevant checks have been done as far as you're concerned, to drive away and then get two traffic officers come up and say, actually, I'm taking it from you and to leave you with a slip of receipt to say the police have got it, I'd be pretty gutted. Bye-bye. Back on the M5, another driver's fate hangs in the balance. This time it's the woman stopped for speeding. PC Toll is checking her licence. If it's good news, he'll send her on her way. If it's bad, he'll be seizing her car. Yeah, that's all received. And just confirm, Pete, she's never applied for it back since 1995. Okay, mate, that's uh, that's uh, fine. Can we organise recovery of the vehicle, please? Okay, right. Bad news for you. You obviously, when you had your uh, disco, your disqualification. Uh, you haven't applied for your licence back then because you surrendered it. It's all on the DVLA database that you surrendered your licence back in uh, 1995. 
because you haven't applied for it back, you've been driving without a licence for almost 14 years. I thought it just come back to me after 12 no, months. No, you have to apply for your licence oh, back. It's just, it is okay. a, a true, true, genuine yeah. accident. I, I completely appreciate what you're saying. I think you've done quite well for 14 years. Pretty well. With no licence, the woman won't be driving anywhere, which means she won't be visiting her mum today. Hello, Mum, you all right? I'm in the back of a police car at the moment. Well, look at they're taking the car. So, so there's, a, there's a first, the first time, it. mate, you get a chance to sit in a well, nice police car. Be We're going to take, take you home anyway. I think Mum is a little bit upset because of her licence. You have to have a licence, you see, to drive. I felt quite guilty, the fact that she's only overtaken us so her son can see the police and wave. Um, and now I've got no choice but to actually seize her vehicle. No, it's texting MOT and insured, Mum. There's nothing wrong with the car. It's yeah. just stupid me. I hadn't, I hadn't renewed my licence and it's been, it's expired. I was all right until I spoke to you. <laughs> That's what mums do. <laughs> they make you upset. My mum's going to get mad at me. I mean, she's going to love it because he's going home in a police car, but I'm not going to get a very warm reception, am I? Don't scratch our car! Another recovery truck, another car off the road. And now PC Toll has discovered yet another problem. When we've recovered the vehicle, um, I've had a little glance at the front and noticed that the tax was out of date by a few weeks. Oh, for God's sake. What, it's almost two and a half two weeks? weeks two and a half weeks out. I didn't have the heart to give her another ticket. Thank you. I'm not bad, really. No, you're not. <laughs> Bye, baby. In fact, he's doing the decent thing and taking her and her son home. You know, I don't go out looking for things, but on this occasion, she's just fall, I've fallen over her, really, and she's just unlucky. Oh, this will cause a stir in the village. Oh, really. that's nothing it, ever yeah. happens. Oh, I knew she'd come to nothing coming back in a police car. But there's another reason for PC Toll's chivalry. All good cops like to have as much information as they can get on those they deal with. OK. Thanks Have a good much. one, all right? You got everything here? Yeah. yeah OK. Definitely. Take care now. OK, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. At least if I've brought them home, there's, a, there's two sides to the story. One, I know where she lives. And secondly, I know they've got home safe. So I am nice, but there's always a, yeah, there's hidden secrets behind my, yeah, my kindness at times. As day turns to night and traffic quietens, the motorway cops widen their sphere of operation. Tonight, PC Adam Toll has teamed up with PC Morris Watson. They're patrolling the southern outskirts of Birmingham when a Skoda driving the other way catches their attention. Should have a look? Yeah, have a look at that one, yeah. Little young bull, lady chap, didn't it? Yeah. Skoda Vera, I think. Yeah. That's the one. There it is, just got round the bend. Okay, I think me and Morris have both had the same feeling that something just wasn't quite right. They just didn't sit right in the vehicle. And I'm going to wrap him, mate. He's all over the shop here, as well. You sort of see things and you think, well, where are they going? Where have they been? So you just get a gut instinct and you think, well, we'll have a look at it, see what it does. And then, you know, we'll see what, what happens from there. Yeah, we're just uh, following this vehicle. It's a bit uh, erratic on the road at the moment, and uh, it's certainly not sticking to the speed limit. So we're just going to uh, run through the uh, police national computer and then go for an early stop. It's ran down for the cameras. It was all over the road then. The number plate check is now coming through. That comes back to a silver Skoda Octavia. Is that the correct vehicle? Three or four. Yes, yes. The checks seem to pan out, but the way the car is being driven is still giving the cops some concern. Um, the speed limit on this road at the moment is uh, 30 miles an hour, and we're doing about uh, 45, up to 50 miles per hour. Uh, my main concern is he a drink driver, or is there something else? Uh, we are recording it, so we've got the evidence that we need, and we'll go for a stop after the, uh, the cone section, if you're happy with that. Uh, yeah, yeah, so am I. Ready? Yep. Good evening. Oh. <coughs> no, and he's going for it. Okay. The driver spots the blue lights and puts his foot down. Bike out, Fosca Tango 95. We've got a vehicle failing to stop, failing to stop. Bristol Road, Intercity, just turning right, right into Pebble Mill. 
When we're on the motorway and we get a pursuit on the motorway, it's, it's contained, really. Our current speed is at 80 miles per hour. When you come off the motorways, especially in a city centre area like Birmingham, you've got your pedestrians, you've got your cyclists, you've got other people that are driving. The vehicle uh, is uh, getting away from us. Still safe to continue, over. Chases in the city are all about teamwork, letting other units know where the car is headed. Yeah, it's uh, left, left into Dogpool Lane. Straight on, mate. Braking, braking, braking. And he's uh, left, left, left. Temporary loss, temporary loss, stand by. Uh, hang on, mate. He's straight on, straight on, straight on. Yeah, it's uh, left, left into Dogpool Lane. Straight on, mate. Still got the vehicle in sight. It's uh, a long way in the distance. The problem is the cop's car is built for the motorway, while the Skoda has the upper hand in the city streets. And the driver doesn't care what risks he takes. As a police officer, you have to make a judgment call. And on this occasion, I wasn't prepared to drive almost three times over the speed limit. Uh, vehicle uh, out of sight. Sometimes they get away from you. You know, it's a bit of personal pride. You know, you've lost a car, but that's the way it is. Drawing like an absolute nut to my he was. No reports on it yet. That's nicked. I suspect that vehicle we've just uh, been following has, has uh, just been stolen and uh, it's probably likely that the owner is not where the vehicle's gone. Just by the manner of the driving that we saw initially at the beginning, it, it just didn't seem right. And as you saw, as soon as we went to stop the vehicle, the vehicle made off straight away. This time the bad guy has got lucky, but there's a long shift ahead of them and PC's Toll and Watson never forget okay. a car. 15 miles south of Birmingham on the M5, CCTV cameras have picked up smoke billowing from a lorry. Fire on the highway is a major problem, not only for the lorry, but for the fast-moving traffic as well. It was a very fierce fire, and you've got all the dangers and hazards associated with that, the size of the vehicle, the loads that they're carrying, and the absolute carnage that could be caused. PC Martin Smith has now teamed up with PC Gareth Westbury. They're planning to bring the traffic to a stop a few miles behind the burning lorry. A lorry uh, containing uh, foam is uh, on fire up ahead, just after Junction 5 and before 4A. It's obviously uh, toxic when the foam is burning and it's burning quite well. We've got to feed the traffic off at uh, Junction 5, but we're bringing it on a slow rolling closure up to that point to allow the highways agency to work safely in front of us to cone the motorway completely off. We've already got a nice queue behind us now. It's just, it was just light traffic, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's so. only light traffic. And we've only been on the rolling closure for a couple of minutes and already we've got three lanes of static traffic and I'm not sure how far behind us it goes, but looking at it, it's a reasonable distance. And you've got this big wall of traffic and you're seeing it all behind you and it's your job to make sure that they're brought safely to a slow. Not that you just dive out in front of them, slam your brakes up and say, right, we're 70 down to 20. It has to be a gradual process of lowering speeds. But slowing the traffic has a huge knock-on effect. At uh, the height of rush hour, you're talking mile a minute build-up of traffic when the, uh, when the flow's heavy. So, obviously, if we don't get the motorway open, you're talking there's going to be a big traffic jam in the morning. And traffic jams mean frustrated motorists, especially if they don't know what the problem is. We have no way of passing information to motorists whilst we're administering the closure. All we've got is a message board in the car saying do not pass. And we can display a message to motorists. What we can't say is why they can't pass. And people do try and get past you because people don't want to be delayed. But if they get past you, then what are they going to face? The burning lorry's in the worst possible position, stranded near the busy intersection of two motorways. With the arrival of another patrol, PC Smith and Westbury can move up to help manage traffic a few miles further north. You take the closure on and we'll, uh, we'll scoot. See you later. All the traffic is going to filter off the M5 onto the M42 and go over the flyover further ahead and basically go around the outside of Birmingham the opposite way. It's a bit of a diversion, and it's hard work for people who only want to go a short distance. But unfortunately, we've got to close the motorway. Right? They're going to have to live with that, and it's uh, it's just one of those things. 
At last, the traffic can get going again, onto the M42 motorway and away from the burning lorry. It is a sight. It's like probably like Moses in the uh, in, in the sea when he parted the waves. You've got everything just there waiting behind you for it all to be called through again. It may be two minutes or hours later. Everybody's raring to go, and it's it's a wall of traffic coming straight through again. But with the lorry still ablaze, the M5 will remain closed for a while yet. The fire brigade don't actually want the scene reopened for some considerable time so they can work safely. So this is going to drag on into the rush hour and it will be some time. So, yeah, I mean, experience on the motorway for me says that it's going to be absolute bedlam in about an hour's time. Back in Birmingham city centre, PCs Toll and Watson are still keeping an eye out for the Skoda which failed to stop. We actually thought at this time that it's either a stolen car or it's a stolen car with joyriders in, um, as it's been around the city centre of Birmingham a couple of times now. So we sort of stayed in the area for a few hours just in case it sort of popped out in front of us. Where do you reckon, mate? Should we? Uh, up there and left. <laughs> See yeah. this thing, it's up there and the cops' decision to keep the area under surveillance from their unmarked car has paid off, even if it's taken a while. Here we go, son. Here we go. There it is. Lo and behold, about three hours later, um, I just spot the car coming towards us. That's it? Yeah, that's the one. Yankee Mike, Yankee Mike from Oscar Tango, uh, 95. I think, why has he come back to the city centre again? He's already been chased by us once, and he's come back in again for another go, so we thought we won him this time. We are behind the Skoda, Holloway Head, Holloway Head Circus. Get the Stinger and out. It's uh, Bristol Street, Outer City. Get the Stinger out Bristol from Street, Bristol Street, Outer City, yeah. If we could get Stinger out, uh, heading towards Bristol Street Motors. This time, the cops have the upper hand. Extra police units are already standing by with Stinger strips designed to puncture the car's tyres. And we get the plan in place where we want as many officers in the area with Stingers. We're going to light him up then. We need to. After this junction? Yeah, we're going to light him up before Bristol Street Motors. Uh, current speed is uh, four zero miles per hour. Heading towards Bristol Street Motors now. We're going to start him up now. Yeah, go for it, mate. Once again, when the blue lights go on, the Skoda makes off. Yeah, he's going yeah, for it. Yeah, vehicle uh, is failing to stop. We've lit the vehicle up. It's approaching Bristol Street Motors now, lane one. Lights At the on lights up ahead, another unit is waiting with a stinger. We talk the patrol that's with the Stinger to where they are. Basically, we force the car into one way. Current speed, six zero miles per hour. The vehicle has been stung. The vehicle has been stung. Toll's plan works perfectly. As the car heads to the lights, a police officer emerges from the shadows and deploys the Stinger. The Skoda's tyres should slowly deflate, bringing the car to a halt. But the driver has other ideas. We're still driving so stupidly that, you know, we're still having great difficulty in keeping up with him. Traffic condition is light, road surface is wet, approaching traffic lights on green. Could be your vehicle, it could be my vehicle, and they don't care. You know, they'll crash him and they'll run off. They won't stop. Current speed, eight zero miles per hour, in a 40 mile an hour limit. Traffic lights on amber, straight across, Highgate Road, Highgate Road, current speed, six zero miles per hour in a 30, and it's safe to continue on. He's not stopping at, at roundabouts, he's not slowing down for traffic junctions. Well, I've got to do that. Yeah, the vehicle's done a red light. The chances he is taking may be reckless, but they are keeping him ahead of the motorway cops. Yeah, it's on to Golden Hillock Road, temporary loss, temporary loss. The cops' two-ton motorway car is not helping them keep up with the lighter Skoda. Yeah, small Leith Highway, Small Leith Highway, into city. Car's awful, eh? Yeah, no, mate, don't worry about it, just do what you can. The fact that he got one, two, three or four tyres deflated, he was still able to control the vehicle and, and get away uh, and make, you know, a decent gap between us. Got left, left there. Sure. The gap he's opened up causes confusion. I thought, no, he's got away again now because we've gone the wrong way and... To get back to him, you know, he could be out of, out of sight again. And we, I thought, no, we can't lose it twice in one night. The cops may have made a mistake, but up ahead, the driver in the Skoda has made an even bigger one. 
Which way? Which way? Left here? Left here, follow that one. I think it's up here somewhere. Immediately, they went down a dead end street, which was brilliant for us. It was the worst thing they could have done. As the Skoda heads into the dead end, other units arrive to help with the arrest. No, if I, I have my instruments. By that time, there was a dog unit behind him, uh, at least another two patrols and, and us, and he got nowhere to go. There are half a dozen cops eager to arrest the two men in the car, but PC Toll makes sure he gets his hands on one of them. You're under arrest, dangerous driving, failed to stop and suspicion of theft of motor vehicle. You don't have to say anything, you may on your defence and do not mention when questioned since you're actually on in court. And you do say no beginning in evidence. All right? The other man, the driver, tried to make a break for it over a fence. Luckily, PC Watson and some colleagues have it covered. All right, chap, listen to me. You're under arrest. Especially the theft of motor vehicle. Anything you want to say? OK. It's a great team effort, proper team effort tonight. The important thing is that we've, uh, we've got a result and no one's injured. And we're all going to go home at the end of the day, including these people as well. The cops may have reached the end of the chase in Birmingham city centre, but over on the M5, the drama's ongoing. The 44-ton lorry is still on fire, causing chaos on the busy motorway. You see, this is the uh, tail back of the traffic that actually got caught behind the vehicle fire when it first happened, so... That's gonna be we're going to have to do the hard shoulder to get past this lot. The... So that lot's not going it, it's going to be here for a really extended amount of time, they may have to consider reverse flow in this, but it's going to be quite complicated because of the nature of the junction behind us and, and the traffic's flowing past at them and there's no slip roads to get the traffic off. So it may well be that those that are caught here are maybe stuck here for some time. I do feel a massive amount of sympathy because we know more information than them and we know that the closure's on for a long period of time. The last thing we want is people to be stuck for hours. It's turning into a major operation. The fire brigade, the highways agency, and now the motorway cops are all involved. The lorry is still ablaze, but the big problem is the acrid smoke it's giving off. You can see why the fire brigade didn't want anybody to actually drive past it now. That's quite a decent fire then, isn't it? Well, it's a proper job. We're not, I mean, we're all gone here, and bear in mind it had been good going for a good 40 minutes then. Yeah. It's still flames out the top of the trailer. What's caused that then? Is it a problem with his brakes or something? Uh, brakes warming up, maybe. Yeah. Maybe anything. Smoke flicked his flag out and it's gone in, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> you, study, you don't know, do you? That's right. Destroyed his lorry completely. He just turned it into a buckled mass, really. And the, the heat generated was tremendous. And it, so, as I said, it melted the tarmac on the motorway. The highways agency hoped to temporarily open a single lane to allow the stranded traffic to pass. What we're planning, as soon as they've knocked it down a bit more, yeah. uh, and there's a bit less smoke, we can get all this tra traffic cleared through. And at least then, we can worry about recovery and that. Keep coming back to this situation where it's time to clear it, it's burning underneath again. But until all that smoke's cleared, we can't safely bring the traffic through here. It's, uh, it won't be safe for them. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of people who think, why the hell they closed it? You're inconveniencing me, but if they come up here and they look at what we're looking at, then they understand why. And they say these guys can work away now and get it knocked down, get the fire out get the motor open as quick as possible. To pull the unit out from underneath it, driven it away. Oh, he's got the unit out? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fair enough, isn't it? When the vehicle caught hold, when the, the fire actually took hold of the vehicle, the lorry driver did the right things on the hard shoulder and he separated the, the cab from the trailer so he could save his cab. Obviously, the more expensive commodity is the cab. With the fire still raging, like the backed up traffic, the lorry driver's going nowhere and he has no idea what caused the fire. Oh, I'm just doing a bit of a pop. Pulled over, looked underneath the trailer, the flames. Dropped the trailer, pulled away from it, from 999, that's all. And I think the firemen are doing a good job anyway. Even with his lorry in flames, his thoughts are with the motorists he's inconvenienced. Cheers for that, then. You're all right, no injuries, no smoke inhalation. Fantastic, thank you. 
By 5 a.m. the fire is almost contained, but its after effects will last far longer. It's a massive impact on the traffic because I can recall thinking, this is going to cause chaos at rush hour. And it absolutely did. The tailback stretched from mile after mile. I think the traffic chaos carried on till dinner time, at least dinner time, because large sections of that motorway remain shut for resurfacing. Back in Birmingham city centre, the two men arrested by PCs Toll and Watson after twice making off from the cops are being brought to Steelhouse Lane Police Station. The driver's facing several serious charges. He's been arrested on suspicion of uh, theft of motor vehicle and he's also been arrested on suspicion of driving uh, whilst over the prescribed limit for alcohol. Yes, for Suspicion of uh, theft of motor vehicle. But the passenger has some surprising news for the cops. It's my car. Listen carefully to me. What's if you didn't pay and see what you've already done, you'll see that it's Adam. my car. Well, well, so where's the theft? Oh, listen to Sarge, Sarge, I'm very confused. Okay, what's going to happen? <laughs> we need to investigate what's going on why, right? You have to give me certain circumstances which are in my view, satisfactory to lead to arrest at the moment, because we don't know who you are. I've never spoken to you before. I'll have to That's me. That's my car. The inquiries have to go into what's happened with the car and why it was driven the way it has, right? You've been arrested on suspicion. I understand that. Let's get it right, Listen, Heather. Let's say it was driving or whatever. We're talking theft of a motor vehicle. It's my car. That's me. We're talking cocky pop. I was shocked because I think every police officer that was involved in that incident was convinced that that vehicle was stolen. It turns out that the front seat passenger was actually the owner of the car. Um, not what I expected. You weren't driving the car, your colleague was, right? There's obviously a reason why things are happening as they have. The officers need to investigate. Does that matter? Yeah, That's why yeah, you've so, been arrested. So, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you interview, that's your opportunity to explain your version of the case. Explain my own, my own car. Yeah. yeah. Explain what's okay, going on. Okay, yeah, I'm with you. What's going on? I'm with you. Now. Okay, you yeah, understand yeah, that? Yeah, I'm here for sneaking my own car. Good stuff. If it was your car and your friend was driving it dangerously and being pursued by the police, most reasonable, complimentous, decent folk would stop and say, what are you doing? It's my car. This job never ceases to amaze me. After 14 years, it still amazes me what people are doing. No further action was taken against the owner of the Skoda. The driver pleaded guilty to dangerous driving. He was ordered to do 100 hours unpaid work and given a six month suspended sentence. The woman who overtook PC Toll so her son could wave at the police was fined 60 pounds and given three points. She has since reapplied for her license. The man who innocently bought a stolen red BMW got his money back. The professional driver that PC Toll caught on his mobile phone was fined £60 and given three points on his licence. No further action was taken against the driver who crashed and rolled his souped-up Toyota. And the man whose car came off worse when he crashed with a lorry and then blew three times over the drink-drive limit was fined £200, disqualified for 23 months and agreed to take a drink-driving course. <laughs>